Welcome friends, this is Kathy Rigby here and you're joining me in my creative cutter room. I'm going to be making this lovely little shop, I'm calling it a shopping bag, but it's a little gift bag. Um, I'm going to teach you how to make it. This comes from an 8x8 sheet of paper, which explains why this one's here. You can also make this out of a 6x6 and this one is a, a two-tone paper and I've made little double handles on this. I haven't really decorated it up yet because I'm trying to decide who this might be for. Um, but there are the two sizes of the little gift bags. These remind me of little shopping bags that, that you get when you're, um, you know, in the department stores. So um, that's what we'll be making today. So let me just show you quickly the six by six piece. Um, my favorite thing to do is just use up your six by six whoops let me get that in the camera correctly a six by six paper pad um i love echo park paper pads and they have some amazing collections that are very versatile so there's your six by six now mine has that little edge right there so i'm just want to trim that off let me set my scoreboard aside for a minute you just want to make sure that you get a true 6x6 six six piece of paper when it comes in the pad. You just want to take that little edge off. You will need a scoreboard. If you don't have this, then feel free to use your paper trimmer. These lines on my scoreboard are to help me um, stay straight. Sometimes when I'm scoring, I can get a little crooked, and the, the red lines help me do that. Um, it doesn't matter which side you want to use. They're both cute. I want to use this as the outside. I'm going to take two edges and score at an inch and a half. So I'm going to do that from opposite ends. So there's one and a half there. I'm going to go one and a half here. And then from the opposite end, I'm going to do two and a half. Two and a half there. And I'm going to do two and a half here. So we move that out of the way. And I'm just going to fold over all of these score lines. There we go. Okay, so when you close two of the score lines, you'll see that they meet up here in the center. And then if you close the other two, you see that you can't really close it without moving the other one. So that's not the edge we're going to work on. We're going to work on the ones that close up like this. But you want to make sure everything's nice and scored. So it's very pliable. When you're working with the two-sided cardstock, sometimes that can not be as pliable. So once you close it up like this, you'll notice that there's a score mark right here. Now I want you to take that score mark and you're sort of going to do a triangle crease. Now if you've done origami before, this will make a lot of sense. You take that crease and you bring it up so it lines up with that score edge. And what will help is if you take your score tool and kind of just rub it in there to make that angle. So for those of you that have ever made those little crane, paper cranes, this is a lot like that. So there's another score mark right here. And I'm going to take that score mark and line it up on this score line. And again, you're making that triangle with your bone folder. I hope you can see that in the camera. So you're going to repeat that on this side. There's a score mark there and a score mark there. I'm going to take this first one and meet up. Now I saw this bag online from someone. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and my upline is a Chicken Scratch. And she has some wonderful tutorials about making little boxes and bags for gifts ideas. And she made the little one on her site. And that gave me the idea to try a little bit bigger gift bag um, for some of these life events that are happening right now. It's a great time for weddings and graduation. Now I'm just taking score line to score line and I'm coming in here increasing the triangles. What you'll wind up with when you get that all done is a little tote that works like that. Now you may want to pinch the edges here just so you can get a nice tight grasp right there. So that's the first bag that's this little one. Now to do the handles you're going to hole punch and she did hers a little bit differently. I wanted these little shopping bag handles 
um, and then I'm going to, her idea was to put a little paper clip there. I'm going to go ahead and probably use a clothespin, and on the clothespin I'm going to add a sentiment or a little figure. Um, I may do something else. I, I might surprise you with what I'm going to do, but that's the size to do her little one. And to do the handles then, you go ahead and hole punch, or you can use a paper clip and turn that into a kind of, whatever kind of little gift box you like. Now that's adorable and would work for some little hugs, but what I want to do is do something a little bit bigger. Here's mine, and you can see this is quite a bit bigger from this one. And I made mine a little bit more of a solid box. She kind of left her sides free like this, so when you open it, you these were not glued down. Um, but I glued my sides down, so to do that you would put glue here and here, and then I also glued in there. And you can just use your score tape for that. But it kept it a little bit more solid, and this is a little bit more substantial of a bag, so you could put a gift card in there, you could fill it full of candy, um, you could put, you know, look at my little blocks here, you could put a couple of little things in there. So if you had a couple of little gifts, you want to just tow in there. And I did it shopping bag style. Now this is um, Die Cuts with a View paper stack. No, I'm sorry, it's not. This is Paper Studio paper stack. It is the thickness of two-sided, but it comes as 12 by 12 in a paper pack. And rather than use two-sided, I like the white core inside because some of this in the fold will be on the inside. So I kind of like that white look inside. I thought it was nice and clean. So that's what I'm using. I trimmed the 12 by 12 down to a 8 by 8. And then you can do this from the back side or the front side. It's up to you. But your first score mark is going to be at the 2 inch mark. And then you're going to turn your paper over and from the opposite corner you're going to go 2 inches again. So when you fold these in, I'm going to show you real quick, these will touch. Okay, that becomes important. Oops, if I throw my tools around. So you want to give that nice good score. This is glittered paper, so there, there needs to be a really good crease. Now, from the opposite ends, you're going to score at 3 inches. Make sure get, and then turn that around and score it three inches again. Now you see why I need that track to follow to stay straight. So you just want to go over those. So you have a nice straight line because again, this is glitter paper that can get a little difficult without the nice score. So this is have heavy duty paper and it's going to be hard to fold so be sure you get those score marks in now you're going to do the same thing there is a the fold is there make sure i'm in camera here the fold is here you're going to kind of fold it and pull it towards you and you want to take your bone folder that helps to kind of make this crease here in the corner because you're just going to bring that line up to the score mark of the top end and then I know this is part is hard to see because this is white. Let me see if I can put something under there. See how that's a triangle right there. I'm just going to follow along there and make that score mark nice and solid. Okay, you're going to go back in and glue this down. But for now, you just need to do that to all four edges. So let's do this side. I'm going to take that folded edge. And again, my bone folder is a really good tool for this because I'm just going to crease in the corner. And as I come to this edge, then I'm going to follow in on the triangle piece left behind here. Okay, so you can kind of see what you're creating there. On this edge, it's weird to do this left-handed, but I'm going to try. I just want to poke my bone folder right at the corner so I can get this started. And then I'm going to make that triangle good solid crease and then my last one move that scoreboard out of the way now the nice thing about these is you can decorate them any way you want you can just do these at a side of cardstock and add in 
stickers to the side, Cricut cuts to the side, you can do some stamping. So this is what you wind up with. Make sure I'm still in camera. This is the box you wind up with. Do you see how that gets difficult to kind of maneuver if you don't glue things down? Now what you want to do is kind of use your fingers down here and pinch that so you can get a nice little grip like this. And what I like to do is go in here to these corners and make sure they're nice and tight because that'll make the bag a little sturdier. Okay, now I'm going to go in and you can probably tell, let me see if I can use, well, I'll use my bone folder. I'm going to go in here and add glue, in here and add glue, and I'm going to add glue in here. Now you're not going to go all the way down. See where that, see where this kind of ends? Right there. You want to make sure and not glue not add glue all the way in here. You're just going to add glue along this edge, along this edge to secure that down, and secure that down, and then you're going to add the edges. So you can fast forward past this part if you don't want to watch me glue. I like to use the multi-adhesive. Those of you that are Stampin' Up! fans, you call this the green glue. And I'm going to add it here first. I need to get a new bottle. And then I'm going to add in here second. And you don't need a lot. I'm putting, a, I'm being generous with it because this paper is glittered. And so I just want to be sure there's enough there to really secure that because of the glitter bumps that are all over these jelly beans. And you want to just kind of hold that down. Now, um, if you have clothes pins, those are a great little tool for kind of securing some of these things down. So you can use those to just kind of pinch right in there. I had some out. Let me just see if I can grab those. Here we go. So nice little crafting tool. Great for decorating, but also that one's a little squampus. So is that. Okay. I bought these at the dollar store, so I guess you get what you pay for sometimes. But that'll help hold that in place till the glue dries a little bit. Okay? Same thing over here. I'm just going to add the glue where I know it's not going to show. And then hold it together. Now, you, this white glue, for those of you that haven't used this mono adhesive, dries pretty quickly. And it's specifically made for paper, so it generally doesn't warp your paper. Um, but you do want to flatten it out. You don't want it to dry in lumps or, you know, in big puddles. So I just like to clip this down for a minute. It really doesn't take that long to glue and you wind up with a purse that looks like that. Now you can do any kind of a handle you want, or you can even staple it shut, put a paper clip, but I'm just going to use my crop a dial here and I'm just going to make two holes at the top. Now I kind of like the handle system that I came up with. Let me show you this and I'm going to show you how to make this but this all pulls tight and then this ends up looking like the tassels on a woman's purse um, and I like how that works because you can open this as wide as you need to and then just kind of cinch it shut. Um, if you don't like the knot there, I kind of like the knot there because I think it looks like a tassel but if you I uh, it would be even cute to put a little piece of chain with like a monogram initial and it would look like a, a purse embellishment. But if you don't want to do that, you can come up with any handle you choose. I'm just going to go ahead and do that again. And you're just going to want to put two holes. I'm eyeballing this. If you're really picky about making sure things line up and they're super straight. You're welcome to do that. I've done enough of these that um, I feel okay about just eyeballing it. And of course when I say that, one is different than the other. Um, for this particular purse, I thought about using this strap, but it's a little um, wide. I could force it in there. Um, I might still. The other color option I had was to just go ahead with white, but there's so much white in here. I think I will go ahead and try this one. Get my clips out of the way. 
So you can see that dries pretty quickly. I'm just going to go flatten everything again, make sure the box is nice and solid. And I'm going to make the hole a little bit bigger. Normally I wouldn't advise you to make the hole bigger, but because this ribbon is a little wider, I think we can get away with it. So. All right. Okay. So I'm just going to, a nice pointy edge works. I'm just going to thread that through. And I'm going to go all the way around and not cut it till I'm all the way through. Ah. Welcome friends, this is Kathy Rigby. This is part two to my little shopping bag, treat bag that I'm going to make. I was busy trying to decide what kind of image I would put on this. So as you can see, I pulled out my pretty kitty um, stamp set. Um, I will share the codes for all of these things on the link below. But um, I also got the stitch frame, the stitch shapes framelits dies, say that really fast three times. Um, and I'm using the second circle in. So what I did was I couldn't decide which kitty would look the best on the bag. And as you can see, probably either one would be adorable. I went with this little girl and I'm calling her my gray princess. Um, I colored her in with my Copic markers, so just so you have an idea of how many colors it takes with Copic to color in, I wound up using the RV00 and the RV20 for her cute little bow. Um, and you don't have to do that many, just obviously um, I like to shade a lot. For her cute cheeks, I used the R30, and I also did the R22 as an accent for this deeper color on the bottom of the bow. Now for the kitty itself, I only used C3 and C5. Now it isn't difficult to Copic color. It's super easy. Everyone should run out and get at least the blender pen, which is the zero. And you'll be able, oh, let me make sure those are in camera. And you'll be able to make, um, a lot of blended images even with your Stampin' Up! markers. For Stampin' Up! markers I also did get my Island Indigo marker and I used this for the stamped image for the sentiment. So let me put these aside real fast. And again I'll post a link with all of those numbers. Um, I have a scrap piece of paper left over from making some little giraffe baby cards the other day and I grabbed the sentiment that came with this image which says, just peeking in to say hello. Now the only part of this I want is the hello. Um, and I think you can tell from my little practice here what I'm gonna do, but I'm going to turn this over and this is the fun thing about markers. So when you have markers that match your stamped images, you can kind of coordinate everything. Now this isn't stamping up paper, but I am pulling out obviously the turquoise colors in this. And I could have used Tempting Turquoise, but I wanted to go just a little bit darker. And as you can see here, I'm just coloring in the hello. I like to have a little scrap piece like this where I can practice. And that was my practice before I did the actual stamping for this. But I'm going over here now to do a second image and I'm gonna just stamp that hello right there. Now when you're using your marker, you can control how much of the image you pick up. So as you can see there, all I did was the hello. And that allowed me to make this cute little banner. So I just trimmed it, shaped the edges, and now I'm going to go back to my tempting turquoise and I'm going to just add a little bit of distressing on the edge here. And while I have it out, since I didn't distress the bag at all, I think I'm going to go ahead and distress the stamped and colored image. Now I love these stitch circle dies. If you haven't had a chance to pick up any of the framelits, this is the one set of framelits I would absolutely say buy and try because it's so versatile. And if you get the stitch framelits um, set that's out of this new catalog, it's 145372. You get the circle, the oval, and the squares all as one kit. And so it's really great to have that. It's pretty versatile for all of your card use. 
And as you can see, what I'm going for here is that cute little image in front and this little tag I would like to put there. Now, to me, that's pretty cute, but it doesn't pop out enough. So also available in the, in the celebration catalog with some of this glitter paper. Now, I forgot to check to see if it's available in the new catalog. I'll check that for you, and if it is, I'll provide a link below. Um, but I grabbed a second, now where'd it go? Oh, here it is. A second stitched framelit. And I'm just gonna use my cuddle bug and make myself a really fun base to, to put behind my little kitty here. So um, I'm using my cuddle bug and you may use your big shot. I like that this is small and portable for my um, retreats that I do. So I'm just gonna put the glitter paper down. Um, the reason for a lot of people to get the big the big shot instead of the small cuddle bug is because of the metal plate that holds these dialets down in place. I think that's really handy to have. I just need it to be portable, so I do the cuddle bug instead, and I'm just really careful to make sure my image doesn't move. So um, you can see there's a little piece of washi tape here. I keep a little piece of washi tape right on the machine in case I become worried about things moving when I'm doing them. So, as you can see, I just made myself a really cute little background there. Now, for those of you that have been stamping up a long time, you may have this punch, and I used this punch on the other purse. Of course, this would be faster, but these are no longer available. So if you have this punch, feel free to do that. You get the little scallop border. For all of my creative cutter friends, if you have a, a Cricut Explore, or silhouette cameo, of course, do a scallop border. You can size it to fit. Uh, most of you have the plantain or the basic shapes cartridge and that will provide something like this. And so it's up to you which one you wanna use because I'm sharing product that's still available. I'm going to use this one and I'm just gonna mount that about where I want my sentiment to be. And then I will use my dimensionals to make the little round part stand up. Okay, so to me that's a little bit better of a bang. So let me just go ahead and put those things on. And again, I know the gluing part's never fun for anyone. So I apologize, but this is just the finishing touches. Now, if you're making a lot of these gift bags, once you have the fold down, it's super, super easy and not a lot of fuss. Of course, I'm making this a little bit more detailed, and so you can choose to do that or not do that. Another super cute option would be if you have some mini doilies to just cut one in half. Um, obviously, this is not a colored one. You would probably wanna use a colored one, not that color, but um, that's another great option for decorating. I'm going to just use some dimensionals behind my stamped image. Now you're seeing the you're seeing the oops part of my creating hair. This was another, uh, on Whisper White, this was another image I'd stamped from Beautiful You. And, and you can see our cardstock's so thick and nice that you don't, it doesn't go through to the other side. So why not use the back side if you don't need the front side? And I'm using like three different kinds of glue here today in these projects, which is typically how I create. So there's no surprise there that I will be using multiple glues in any one project. And that's really how I create. So if you are not doing that, that's something you might wanna consider because there's a different glue for every project. Now I'm hesitating just a little bit because I want to add a little bit of an embellishment here. I think black might be a little too abrasive, but I do have some pearls. And this may not be in camera, but that's okay. I want to add just a little baby one right here. What's a purse without some bling, right? Okay, ladies, so that is my little shopping bag, gift bag, suitable for any small little treat. Now, of course, I'm a girl and I'm gonna think jewelry. It's a perfect size for a cute jewelry box, right? So if you're gonna give your girlfriend something special, or, you know, a four box of chocolates. I, I've seen some designer chocolates that come in these really cute little boxes 
with four little treats in there. If you're going to do something special like that for a friend for a birthday, why not give them something super special and add the little gift shopping bag. So this is Kathy Rigby. Thank you so much for stopping by my Creative Cutter Room.